Okay, we are live. Hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the latest episode of USG Alumni Talks. I'm Dania, and I'm pleased to introduce our guest speaker, Camila Kurbanova, a FLEX alumna. Camila Kurbanova is a proud Uzbek born and raised in Tashkent. At the age of 16, Camila won the FLEX scholarship and traveled to the U.S. to study in her final year of high school. She got her bachelor's degree in finance and management from the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania. Upon graduation from Wharton, Tamila pursued a career in equity sales in New York, first at Morgan Stanley Investment Bank and then at UBS. After spending 10 years in the United States, Tamila moved to Dubai with her family, where she continued working at UBS for another three years. Then, Camila took a five-year break from her career to dedicate her full attention to her two daughters. In 2018, she went back to work, but this time into private banking at Julius Baer in Dubai. Finally, one year ago, after spending almost 20 years abroad, Tamila moved back to Uzbekistan with her family, where she co-founded 12 Stars Capital with the goal of attracting foreign investment into small and medium scale projects in Uzbekistan. And today, Tamila will cover two topics. Education is the best investment. And the second one, tips on how to ace a job interview. And before we get started, I want to remind to our viewers, if you have any questions to our speaker, please write them in the comments box and our presenter will respond to them following the presentation. All right, and let's get it started. Welcome, Tamila. Thank you so much for joining us today. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Dania. Hope everyone is doing well and keeping safe and healthy, which is the most important thing at this moment in these uneasy right. times. Uh, I'm very, very happy to be here. I would firstly okay. like to thank American Center in Tashkent for giving me this opportunity to be here today. Thank you, Dania, for hosting me. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. And thank you, everyone who has tuned in uh, to, to listen to us today. I am, um, as I said, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, for me, the goal is to share my story uh, and share about, uh, talk about my experience in the US and uh, send two key messages. Um, the first message that I, um, I, would like you, uh, I would like to send is that education is the best investment one can make in themselves. And um, the second message is that hard work and perseverance always uh, help you to reach your goal, no matter how ambitious that goal is. And um, at the end, I would also like to talk about interviewing and share a few tips um, of interviewing from my own experience. Uh, so let me start. Uh, just like Dania said, I am from Uzbekistan, very proud. I, I grew up in Tashkent and lived here until I was 16. And pretty much my big story began uh, when I was um, very, very blessed and uh, lucky to win the flex scholarship, which gave me an opportunity to go to the United States. And um, I'm very grateful that I had this chance because I think FLEX is one of the best things that happened to me. Uh, this exchange program uh, was a springboard in my life, um, something that helped me uh, jumpstart my future, so to speak. And um, I want to uh, just uh, uh, spend a few minutes on, on the program itself. Uh, may, many of you might know FLEX is, uh, stands for Future Leaders Exchange Program and you get to go um, to the United States as an exchange student for one year. So I, uh, at the age of 16, I left and I went to the United States. It was a new country, a new town, new culture, new family, new school. Everything was new, which is great and exciting. At the same time, it was a bit overwhelming because you get, um, you know, a bit anxious and uh, but uh, and it makes it puts you out of your comfort zone. But that's uh, when you grow the most. So this was, um, I think, it was one of the most defining experiences that I had, and um, I had a huge opportunity for growth because all of these new things presented me uh, with uh, with the opportunity to learn first and foremost. Um, I want to just uh, 
spend a few minutes on and just say go through those all those new things first uh, it was um, the, the country was new the United States and I I um, I like I love United States and what I really appreciate about this country the most is that there is meritocracy anyone no matter where you're from no matter who you are if you are diligent if you are perseverant if you work hard and if you're smart you can uh, reach uh, any goal that you set for yourself, um, you don't really need uh, to be very connected or anything like that. And so it, it gives you a chance to have this, uh, as they say, American dream. And it's it's really true. I've seen it, I've experienced it, and I really think it's a great it's a great thing. It's something great to aspire to. Um, I also want to say that I went um, to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, which is a small town. Maybe you've heard of Gettysburg. Um, it's a really nice town, and what's uh, interesting about it, it's a historical town because uh, Gettysburg, uh, in, in Gettysburg, one of the largest uh, battles of the Civil War, American Civil War, was fought actually in Gettysburg. So it has a lot of history, which was very interesting. And when I went to the States, I, I spent a year with one family who I'm very, very, very grateful uh, to for hosting me. Uh, it was a young couple. Um, my host mom's name was Julie and my host dad's name was Jeff. And they had two little kids. So I had two, two younger siblings, Karen and um, Timmy. And it was, it was really a nice experience because I love kids and we spent lots of time together. And most importantly, they gave me a home to live. Uh, they cared for me. They um, they guided me and they helped me uh, go after what I really wanted. So uh, Flex overall was an amazing experience for me. It was an eye-opening experience. I, I learned a lot. And most importantly, as I said, it jump-started my future because even before I left to go to the United States, I heard about another Flex um, alumna who um, obviously was an exchange student uh, through the program, but also uh, was able to get into a university in the United States. And after finishing her flex exchange year, she went uh, back to the United States to study. So even before leaving uh, Uzbekistan, I, I heard about that and I thought, you know what, this is really cool and this is really great and I want to do the same. And that was my goal. At that point, I only knew one university in the States, which was Harvard University. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna go to Harvard. And then when I was in high school in Gettysburg, one of my teachers actually mentioned that I should go to Wharton. And I, I was like, OK, I didn't know what Wharton was. Um, apparently, Wharton is also a, a great business school at the University of Pennsylvania, uh, which is an Ivy League university, which is one of the oldest universities in the um, in the United States. And Wharton on its own, uh, which is like a this one of the one of the schools at the university has its own um, good name because it's one of the top business schools so at that time i didn't realize it was a hard university to get into i just thought you know what i'm gonna try and i'm gonna apply and um on top of that i signed up somewhere online um that i'm interested in universities and a lot of universities uh, started sending me brochures so in total i applied to 44 universities which is a bit uh, exaggerating, but I thought, you know, it's very hard to get into university. And in Uzbekistan, uh, at that time, uh, it was quite uh, difficult to enter university. So for me, I was like, you know what, I should try to maximize my chances. So I'll apply everywhere. Uh, and I applied, which was great. And then I got into 40 of those universities. And then I realized that uh, getting in wasn't actually that, that hard. The challenge was funding it. And out of the 44 universities, uh, the four universities that didn't take me were actually Harvard. And then it was University of Pennsylvania Wharton and then Yale University and Lehigh. So I was like, okay, I guess um, not this time, but hopefully in the future. And I went, uh, I, I decided to go with the, the university that I had the most chances of us. And out of the 40 universities that actually accepted me, uh, there were three that had um, that that, he, that had given me more or less um, uh, full scholarship, so to speak. So one of the universities was uh, Youngstown in Ohio, and um, my host family was very kind to take me there to visit the university. But 
after visiting the university, I realized that that's not a place where I want to study for the next four years. So I decided not to go there. Um, the other place that gave me a full scholarship was Gettysburg College, which was in Gettysburg where I was an exchange student. And it was great. Uh, it was a really nice school. It was a liberal arts college, but it was a smaller one. So um, as much as I as much as I liked it, I didn't quite want to go there because uh, one thing that I learned actually about myself during flex um, uh, uh, during the flex program is that uh, I am a city person. I come from Tashkent, which has four million population. So going uh, and spending a year in a small town uh, showed me that I actually need that. Um, um, I need a big city to be happy. I need the metropolitan area. I need, I like so the sound of traffic. I miss it, you know, as, as crazy as that may sound. And um, even though I got into Gettysburg at the end, I didn't end up going there. And I want to mention one thing uh, that's very important. Uh, the reason I got into Gettysburg and I was able to get a full scholarship, which is very, very hard to do, is because I had an in-person interview there. And that's why it's very important uh, for me to cover um, interviewing, which I will do later on, because interview gives you a chance to impress someone. It gives you a chance to tell your story. It gives you a chance to uh, to make a difference for yourself. So that's what happened at Gettysburg College. With Gettysburg College, I had an interview with the head of admissions there, which I um, who I, I called Gettysburg College, and I kept asking them and asking them, and they finally gave me an interview with the head of admissions, and uh, that made a huge difference. And then the third option, uh, I'm going back to now to the schools that accepted me and were giving me scholarships, was Drexel University. Drexel University was in Philadelphia, in, uh, in Pennsylvania. And Philadelphia is a big city, it's one of the largest cities in um, the United States. And I really wanted to go to Drexel because it was in a large city, uh, it was very um, cosmopolitan. The, the university was large, there were a lot of international students, which is what I wanted because I. Uh, I wanted to know uh, after learning about American culture and meeting all sorts of different people from different nationalities and cultures, I wanted to learn more about other uh, nationalities and other cultures. So I wanted to be surrounded in the environment where there were a lot of international students. And that's what m one of the things that, that drew me to Drexel. Also, they had a co-op program, which is a program basically where you study for six months and then you work for six months, which gives you a chance to, uh, to get work experience so you can figure out for yourself for the future what uh, what you want to do in the future but also make some money so um so i could uh, then pay for my education but drexel hadn't given me actually a full scholarship because uh, f uh at drexel they didn't consider me as an uh, they consider me as an international student which is correct um so Th their full scholarships were not applicable to international students, even though my SAT scores and other scores that I took the test uh, were okay with that. I mean, they would have uh, qualified for the full scholarship. They didn't consider me, but I was very, very lucky because I kept calling Drexel every day. I really wanted to go there. So I kept calling admissions every day and I kept asking them and saying that, please find me a host family. If they, if, you know, I can live there, I can help them so they can host me while I'm at Drexel. Uh, please help me find a job on campus so I can pay, um, the difference between the scholarship and the difference that I have to pay for the uh, for my uh, university education, and I kept calling them every day. I think for about three or four months, and finally that perseverance paid off because one day they called me and they said, um, "You know, Tamila, we have um, a very uh, generous and kind gentleman, and he's um, his name was Dr. Steinberg, and he was actually." Uh, one of the people, uh, no, I think one of the very few people who was helping a, a number of students go to Drexel University because he was helping, he was paying partly for their education. He was picking smart kids from around the world. I think he was helping at that point for the, someone from uh, Sierra Leone and then someone from um, one of the uh, former Yugoslavia uh, countries, a few and, and a few other students. And uh, 
when they told him about me, they, he said, "Okay, let me meet her and let's uh, let's see if I can help her." So the, he goes again one one more chance for another interview. So I met Dr. Steinberg. He he actually drove from Philadelphia to to Gettysburg, uh, and believe it or not, the day he, that he drove uh, back then I didn't have a cell phone, and the day he drove we had a bomb threat at the high school. So everyone went back to their home because the high school was evacuated. And I said, "I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to stand here outside. I don't care. I need to meet this doctor." Steinberg because he's gonna help me uh, so I waited for him patiently and, and then he came and we met and I told him about um, myself I told him about uh, the choices I had between Drexel University and Gettysburg College and that I really wanted to study in the United States and then he told me if I help you go to Gettysburg College um, since they're giving you pretty much full scholarship there's not much that I need to pay so I can help a lot of students if I help you to go to Drexel because there is uh, the difference between what they're giving you and what you have to pay is big I won't be able to help that many students but then I told him um, he himself uh, lived in, uh, in Philadelphia so I told him the reason why I think Drexel University would have been a better fit for me why I would be happier there and then he told me something that I value to this day he told me you have to follow your heart everything you do in life follow your heart and he was actually instrumental and I'm beyond grateful to him for this he went back to Drexel University and he asked them to make an exception and consider me as an um, as a non-international student and when they did that um, they were actually able to give me the presidential presidential scholarship which covered pretty much um, uh, everything that um, tuition room and board and so he he helped me do that and i was beyond grateful to him because um, then i was able to pursue my dream i was able to go to drexel university and study there and then he was still helping me he was my mentor and then he was still helping me financially because besides uh, room and board and um, college tuition uh, you still need the money for other things uh, for for miscellaneous expenses so the first year that i went to drexel he actually helped me he had the he had given me a monthly allowance, which was great. But then the second year, he told me I have to start working, so I can um, I need to learn how to make money, which was also a great uh, lesson that I learned. Um, so this was uh, my um, story with getting into university. And while I was at Drexel, I I loved uh, my time there. It was a, a very very. Uh, good university. I learned a lot. I did this co-op program that I mentioned. I worked for six months at a pharmaceutical company called Bristol Myers Squibb in New Jersey, which gave me um, a hands-on experience uh, because I was studying finance at Drexel. So I went into uh, becoming a financial analyst, which was very interesting. Um, but then about two years, I, stay, I spent about two years at Drexel. But after the first year, one of my friends who I met at the honors um, pro, at, through the honors program because I was enrolled at the honors program uh, since I had a scholarship and because my grades were good. Um, I met a friend of mine and she actually graduated after my first year because she was already a senior while I was a freshman and she she got into um, University of Pennsylvania which was uh, coincidentally right and next door to Drexel because it also was also at Philadelphia and she got into University of Pennsylvania to get her master's and she told me that I should apply and then I said no why would I apply I applied already to University of Pennsylvania I applied to Wharton before and they didn't take me this is a, you know it's an Ivy League University uh, Wharton is a top uh, business school in the world uh, you have people like Warren Buffett people like uh, Elon Musk Donald Trump who went there they would never take me and then she said no you should try you should really apply and then I listened to her and I actually went and I applied to uh, University of Pennsylvania. And again, um, interview makes all the difference. I was very lucky. I went for a campus uh, tour and the campus tour, before the tour, there was a presentation about the university and the presentation was given by the, admi uh, the head of international admissions of the University of Pennsylvania. And when I heard that, instead of going and um, continuing to do the tour with everybody else, I decided that I should uh, just stand, uh, stay back and have a chat with, uh, with this head of admissions, of international admissions. And uh, we had a lovely chat and I told her about who I am. I told her that I would love to go to uh, Wharton. I would love to go to the University of Pennsylvania. I told her that I was studying already at Drexel, that my GPA was 4.0 and I had a number of other things. I was involved in many clubs. I had a lot of leadership roles and I had part-time jobs. And 
I told her about everything, but most importantly, I told her how, uh, what a difference it would make to me if I was able to go um, to Burton uh, at the University of Pennsylvania. And to my biggest surprise, it actually worked. I got, uh, I applied and then I got a letter in mail saying that I got in, but not only did I get in, uh, which is very difficult because um, as a transfer student, it's it's extremely difficult to, uh, to get into uh, this college, but also, um, I couldn't pay for myself. I actually needed um, needed funding. So when I told them initially, they said, look, we don't even have scholarships because everyone who goes here is smart. And uh, if we give a scholarship to someone, it would mean that they're smarter than the others. And everybody who goes to this university is smart. So I thought, you know what, I probably won't have a chance. But I applied anyways, uh, thanks to my friend Rupal, who actually uh, kind of inspired me to do that. And I got in and um, this interview made all the difference in the world because not only did I get in, but I also uh, was awarded a grant that covered everything, covered my tuition, my room and board and uh, everything. I was, I was so happy and I was actually, I was super happy. I was very excited, but at the same time, I was a little bit nervous because I felt that Drexel gave me such a great chance and it was an, an amazing opportunity. They believed in me, they helped me. Dr. Steinberg came along, he helped me pursue my um, my dreams. And then I, I was at this uh, junction where I wanted to go to University of Pennsylvania. I wanted to go to Wharton because I knew my life would be very different there because, and the opportunities that I would get would be very different. But at the same time, I felt loyalty to Drexel. So I went back to Drexel, the head of admissions at Drexel University, and I told her about the story. And then she said, you know, Tanila, I, I really love you because I had a very good relationship with her. I kept in touch with her uh, at Drexel University. I always try to um, uh, participate in all the international days, all the talent shows to to showcase our uh, my culture, talk about Uzbekistan, and just be active in general. And when I talked to her, I told her this is what I have. I was accepted to Wharton, and um, I really think it's a great chance. But at the same time, I know how much Drexel has done for me, and Drexel is the university that you know I'm at at the moment, and I love it. And then she told me I would give you advice that I would give to my own daughter, and she actually had a daughter, and um, her name was Shumi Muinde. Uh, this is the head of admissions at um, international admissions at Drexel, and she told me, um, I think you should go and you should take uh, the chance. You you don't get this chance every day, so you should uh, take advantage of it. Um, you've done uh, really well at Drexel. You've given all you had. You've been a very good student. You've been a very active student at Drexel, and we appreciate that. But now you have a chance, so once in a lifetime opportunity, and you should pursue that. And with the blessing of Shumi, I accepted uh, the, in, I mean, uh, the offer from uh, Wharton to go to Wharton, and this was um, another great experience uh, in my life because um, the, even though the university was right next to Drexel, it was different. It was different in the sense that it was uh, an even larger university. It was uh, an older university. There were a lot of resources, and. Uh, uh, the type of people who went there were also different. Uh, while Drexel was very international, um, it was uh, still had a lot of Americans, and equally at the University of Pennsylvania, you had a lot of Americans. But uh, there was just a, a, a level, a higher level of uh, a degree of diversity. There were lots of lots of international students from all over the world, and they were all very very smart and uh, were all were accomplished. Were all. Uh, goal-oriented. At Wharton, everyone was super competitive. Um, so I actually uh, had time, uh, had a bit of a rough time adjusting because uh, I didn't know things like a curve. Well, even if you get an A, if everybody else gets an A, it doesn't mean that everyone will get an A. They adjust you and they will only give the A to the top 5% and everybody else gets um, other grades accordingly. So um, it was a it was a learning experience, but it was one of the best experiences because I learned a lot. I was uh, challenged a lot. I uh, met a lot of people from all over the world, and um, it was a great networking experience. But most importantly, after graduating from Wharton, or even during um, my time at Wharton, it gave me um, uh, it gave me access to different kind of employers because. Uh, being at the at an Ivy League university, it means that you have uh, the 
top companies from all over the United States and even uh, international companies who come and recruit at, uh, at these kind of universities. So you have a chance at landing a, a job, um, an amazing job, anywhere from um, being on Wall Street to being at top three um, consulting companies to, to anywhere, anything that you want. And the name itself gives, gives you a huge jump start. It, it lets you, uh, it, it helps you go through, you know, uh, open any door that you want. So that was amazing, an amazing experience, and I really loved it. And and what made uh, uh, me appreciate, I actually spent a, an extra year there instead of doing two years. I spent three years at Wharton because I realized that I was not prepared to take a full advantage of everything that the university had to offer, all the resources that the university had to offer. So I allowed myself to to stay an extra year to take advantage of that, and that's uh, also one of the good decisions I made because there was really a lot a lot I could take advantage of and one was um, uh, actually um, getting a job because I transferred as a junior which means a third year student and usually you get an internship after your third year and that internship uh, decides it's a very critical internship because it, it can get you uh, to a full-time job or if you don't like it you'll, you'll still look for another job but it's it's very critical. And after my first year at Wharton, I didn't end up getting a good job um, because I just didn't know about uh, all these companies. I didn't have time to do my homework. There was a lot of period of adjustment. So I stayed back one year, which allowed me to have a second chance at being a junior. So uh, after my second year, actually, I got, I got an internship at Morgan Stanley, uh, which is an investment bank on Wall Street. And I really, really wanted to be there because um, uh, it was an interesting, a very interesting program. It was a rotati rotation program, which means you spent, within the 10 weeks of internship, you spent um, a few days at different desks learning about different products. So you can, at the end of the internship, you can pick something that you really like. And if you get an offer, you end up getting a full-time offer to go back after you graduate. Um, but again, with Morgan Stanley, I didn't get in right away. Uh, I had good, uh, I made a good connection with the recruiters. I had good interviews, um, but they gave me a contingent offer, meaning that, you know, I'm, I was kind of on a wait list and I had to actually go and get a few other uh, competing offers from other banks uh, and tell them that I might be joining another bank. And when I, as soon as I said that, they actually gave me a full, uh, not a full time, sorry, but uh, an offer to take the internship. So it was an interesting experience. So I did my summer internship at Morgan Stanley and then I went back to uh, Wharton and then I graduated. And after my summer internship at Morgan Stanley, I actually got a full-time offer from them. So it was great because I went into my senior year in college and I already had a job that I really wanted to take. And I ended up going there after graduation. So I uh, pursued a, a career in equity sales, which means uh, basically um, selling stocks. Uh, but I wasn't actually trading them. I was more, um, I was advising clients and uh, clients like mutual funds and hedge funds and um, different kind of institutions in the U.S. And I actually covered Boston. So that gives you, maybe you've heard names like Fidelity, Wellington. These are one of the, uh, some of the largest funds in the U.S. Uh, so it was advising them to buy or uh, to sell certain stocks. And the, um, the region that we were covering was emerging Europe, Middle East and Africa. And that the biggest, uh, biggest uh, markets in that region, in the EMEA region, were Russia, Turkey, South Africa and Middle East. And it was a perfect job for me because I spoke Russian and then I spoke um, Turkish because I used to study at the Tur Turkish high school before... Um, I went to uh, to, uh, to the U.S. and uh, was a flex exchange student. And then, um, I mean, in South Africa, you, you, you only need English. And then in the Middle East as well, you, you can get away with English. So uh, it was a perfect place for me. And that's what I did for two years at Morgan Stanley. And then um, I got headhunted uh, because I had uh, good client relationships when other banks were looking for uh, good salespeople, clients themselves were the ones who recommended me. And so I got headhunted to join UBS and I spent two, four years there. And then um, after about 10 years in the US, um, I, I already uh, had gotten married. Uh, and my husband is actually uh, uh, also Uzbek from Uzbekistan, but we met in, in New York, which is uh, very interesting. And uh, we got married and we decided to be closer to Uzbekistan. And um, the closest uh, place was, well, 
one of the closest places was Dubai. So we decided to move to Dubai and then I went with UBS to Dubai and then I did um, a similar job in Dubai. I worked for three years and then when, I, when we, we decided to have kids, I decided to take a, a, a long maternity leave so I can spend time with my um, with my kids, uh, I have two daughters, and uh, the first five years, uh, for the first one at least, I I was completely at home with the, with with her, which was which was a great experience because I realized that um, uh, I can make a world of a difference to my kids because they are my kids and I have full responsibility for them, and from my own experience, which is one of the messages I uh, that I'm trying to to um, convey to you is that education makes uh, the most, uh, I mean, it, it makes a huge difference in your life. And uh, I, I believe that education actually starts from when the kid is born. Uh, so I wanted to stay at home so I can focus on, um, on my kid's education from the very early, from very early on when they were just born and uh, spend my time basically on early childhood develop, um, development. Uh, so I, I did that for five years, and then I met an old um, colleague of mine from UBS in Dubai, and then he said that he meant, uh, he joined Julius Beer, which is also a Swiss bank um, in Dubai, which does private banking, which is a little bit of a different uh, sphere. So it wasn't equity sales that I did before, but private banking. But it's also interesting because it's still finance, it's still investment. Um, it's just the, not just stocks, but it has bonds and all sorts of other products. Uh, but the role would be a similar role where you work with clients and you advise them. Um, just the profile of the clients was different. These were private clients, clients who have uh, uh, their own um, assets that you need to advise rather than funds per se. Uh, so uh, seeing him, running into him, and then he said that, you know, they need a, Rus a Russian-speaking person to join um, the bank, uh, basically helped me, and then I went on, I interviewed, and then they asked me to join Julius Bear, which I didn't, it was also very interesting and, um, and a very great uh, experience because I learned a lot from there. It was a good, um, a good change from being at home full-time for five years because uh, I did miss the interaction with... Uh, uh, stimulating interaction with adults and uh, uh, having good conversations and uh, so I went back and I, I worked which is which was also good and finally um, almost uh, 20 years later uh, both my husband and I we, we decided that it's a really good time at the moment to come back to Uzbekistan and do something in Uzbekistan because of all the uh, changes that are happening in the country because it, the country is opening up and um, uh, and there are a lot of opportunities. So one year ago, we moved to Uzbekistan, and I'm very happy to be back here. I'm very happy that um, we're able to be back here and do good things and make a difference. Um, we we opened a few businesses, and um, we're employing uh, quite a few people, which definitely makes a, a positive impact on the economy, and um, among other things. So. This is my uh, story, uh, in short, um, and I just wanted to say that uh, hopefully through this you can see that um, for me uh, what made the biggest difference in my life is education. First was learning English. I started learning very, very, um, uh, what do you call it, dedicated, I dedicated a lot of time to English since I was um, maybe 11, I had a tutor and I was really keen to learn English and because of that I was able to get the Flex Scholarship and go to the United States. And so, Dania, thank you very much for uh, putting in the, the, the slide. I, I completely forgot about that. But this is my first key message. Educa education is the best investment that you can make because uh, the return on that investment is not um, tenfold. It's not even hundredfold. It could be a thousandfold. Uh, from me, for personally, from my personal experience, I can say that it was um, more than a thousand times more what I got back from the time and the money that I invested in my education. And I think uh, it's the best thing that one can do for themselves because once you invest in yourself, uh, in educating yourself, in learning something new, nobody can take it away from you. It's always here. It's always in your head. And it will always lead you to better things, to uh, to new things. Obviously, 
the second uh, point is that your earning potential is much higher because when you're educated you can apply to more jobs you can start your own business you can make much more uh, versus not being educated and of course um, access to mo more opportunities uh, the more you learn the more educated you are the more open-minded you are uh, the more opportunities there will be the, you will see that the world is actually is not such a big place it's actually uh, you know uh, it's it's one world it's uh, and you can basically reach anything you want so um bas that's my um that's my motto in life uh, education is the best thing that you can do for yourself and i tell that to everyone and i and i tell that to my kids as well and then the second message is that with hard work and perseverance you can reach any goal no matter how ambitious it is uh, for me, when I was before I went to Flex, I remember I was at the, at the high school and I used to tell my friends that I'm going to go and study at Harvard. And they used to laugh at me because they used to say, oh, like, what are you saying? You know, and, but for me, I thought, you know what, why not? I really want to and I'm going to do that. And at the end, um, I didn't end up at Harvard. I ended up at Wharton, but it's equally uh, as a strong of a um, educational uh, i mean strong of a university and it gave me lots and lots of opportunities uh and i can say that um i believed in it i really believed in myself i believed in the goal and i didn't i didn't take no for an answer no matter what uh, who said what i just i i had a goal and i had to uh, i had to get to it and um keep at it this is the second um point of uh, my message uh, you keep you have to keep trying because sometimes it, you don't uh, succeed from the first time uh, because you know it's it's very rare actually that people succeed from the first time for me personally flex the first year that I did flex I didn't do really well on my interview and I actually didn't get it um, so I got the flex scholarship the second time I tried um, when I think about um, my university work then I didn't get in there from the first time I had to uh, try the second time when I and I got in there a uh, same with my first um, employer Morgan Stanley they interviewed me but they didn't give me an offer I had to go and uh, try again and get an offer from another bank and then they gave me an offer uh, to join the internship program so it just tells you that you have to keep at it. You have to keep trying no matter what, no matter, you don't take no for an answer. And if one door is closed, then you go through the window. You know, if one door is closed, you see if there is another door, if there is no door, then you go through win the window, you find other ways of uh, getting to your goal. You just have to really be, um, you have to have a goal, be clear about it and just go to it no matter what, no matter, you know, what other people say. Um, and last but not least, I want to talk about interviews. Like I mentioned, uh, interviews have been very, very critical for me, for everything, um, uh, all the opportunities that I had that I mentioned, um, they all came with an interview. Flex uh, came through an interview. Uh, for me to be able to go to university, uh, besides applications, I did interviews. To get a job, you do interviews. So that's your that's anyone's chance to tell their story and to make an impression and to make a strong impression so i would urge everyone to to try to you know to not be scared because this is actually a great opportunity i've been on the with interviews i've been on both sides so I, like i mentioned i've interviewed for all these opportunities but after i graduated and um, now, when kids, uh, when I lived in Dubai, I was part of the interviewing uh, committee for University of Pennsylvania. So, uh, students who are applying, uh, high school students who are applying to University of Pennsylvania, they all are given a chance to be interviewed. And so, I've done uh, many years of interviewing students uh, and then writing recommendations to the admissions committee at the University of Pennsylvania. So, I've seen interviewing from both sides. and. I have to say the key, I think, is in preparation. You have to do an in-depth research uh, for whatever you're interviewing for, whether it's, it's a company that you want to work for or maybe it's a university that you want to study at. Or whatever else you're interviewing for, you have to know what it is. And you have to know it so well that you need to impress the person that you're meeting um, with your knowledge. Because uh, when, when I interviewed students who told me that they um if they really like university of pennsylvania because 
uh, University of Pennsylvania had this and this and this and this program, and they ha it had this opportunity and this research and that and the other, I'm, I was actually finding out a lot of new things about the university myself. And I'm sure when I interviewed for jobs and when I told, you know, the guy at Morgan Stanley who was interviewing me about Morgan Stanley, he learned a lot because Morgan Stanley is such a big company that it's impossible for one person to know everything. But when you you have someone on the other side who is very, very keen and knowledgeable about um, the university or the company they're talking about, you actually want to hire them or you want to take them as a student um, because that that preparation shows that they really care. Um, the second uh, tip for interviewing is that you need to tell why you want to work for this company or why do you want to study at this university. It goes back to the preparation. If you prepare, you prepare and you do an in-depth research, you find a lot of things about the company or the university and you can say what it is that you really want and why you want to be there because put yourself in a position of an interviewer. Who would you rather hire or take um, to study someone who wants to be at your institution or someone who doesn't really you know want to be there um, so it's very important for you when you go into an interview to show that you really want to be there um, and you should be going for an interview only to places that you know that you really want to be there uh, for instance my best experience was uh, like I said, Morgan Stanley didn't give me right away the offer for an internship. I had to go to other banks. And when I went to other banks, I interviewed, I, I, I want, uh, uh, I'll be honest, I interviewed to, uh, with a few different banks. And I told them all that I really wanted to be there. And I wasn't um, being dishonest. I actually wanted to be there because I didn't know where I would end up. I did a lot of research about each of these banks. And I found the things that I really liked about each one of them. And I told the interviewer why I wanted to be at that bank. And I believe it or not, I got offers from all those banks and because I learned that this is this is one of the key things that you have to say. And um, you also learn yourself, right? So um, that's uh, the other thing you need to do. You need to tell why you want to be there. And lastly, uh, you have to say what you can bring to the table. Um, again, after you've done a lot of preparations, after you know the company or the university really well inside out, after... Um, you know why you want to be there, you will also pick up things um, where you can add some value. For instance, you can come to a company interview and you can say, like, I know about this, this your company really well. These are the good things. These are my, you know, maybe areas that need some improvement. And I have an idea how I can improve it or I can do this um, or, the, or that to, to help. Uh, that actually helps helps a lot because everyone, when they're hiring you um, to work for them or whether they're taking you as a student to, to be in the university, they want you there for a reason. They want you to, to be there so you can be a good employee or they want you, in case of a student, they want the student to be there so they can add value. They can uh, be make the student body more diverse. They can uh, share their experience. Um, so these are the things that are very important. These three questions you need to to answer first and foremost for yourself. And if you do that, then you should be able to uh, to convince the interviewer that you're the best candidate for that uh, job or for whatever else you're interviewing. I think that's about it, Dania. We might wow. have run over a little bit. <laughs> Sorry for the lengthy uh, discussion. Uh, thank well, you so much for monologue. your log. <laughs> yeah, time is running out, but uh, thank you. Uh, it's really interesting and inspirational. Uh, thank you so much for a remarkable presentation. Let's see what uh, questions we have from the audience. Uh, a question from Gulshan Mahmudova. What was the biggest challenge for you as an international student? Uh, well, I'll tell you, when I was applying for universities, the biggest challenge for me as an international student was to get money, to get funding, because uh, it's, it makes sense, right? In, in the United States, um, preference goes to American students, so they get more, uh, you know, funding, they more, get more help, they get financial aid. As an international student, you get less of that. So that was my biggest challenge. Um, other than that, I I can't really think, I mean, like, going to a new country is, is, is challenging because you stand out, you, you don't necessarily, uh, um, maybe you don't fit in. 
I, I had a, I used to get really upset when I told people that I'm from Uzbekistan and they used to tell me, oh, is that Russia? If they knew, um, if they didn't know, they'd be like, what is it East Pakistan or West Pakistan or what is it? That used to get me really worked up. But then I thought, you know what, let, let's look at it from the other side. This is my chance to tell them about my country, to tell them where my country is, what it is and uh, share my culture. So that's pre pretty much it. <laughs> Thank you. One more question from Sarvanos Saidahmedova. She is asking, mm -hmm. Hello, you were the exchange student, so you had an opportunity to stay in the US after the end of FLEX program. So I, I think uh, Sarvanos is asked, she wants to know how you got this chance to stay in the United States after I, your exchange program was over. I didn't get a chance to stay in the United States. I, I went to. Um, to the United States as an exchange student for nine months. I think we left in August and then we came back in June. So I completed my exchange program as per um, rules. I came back to Uzbekistan. But since I got into university, I was able to come back, spend the summer here in Uzbekistan and then get an, a student uh, visa, an F1 visa, which is a different type of visa because when you're an exchange student, you have a J1 visa. I applied for exactly. an F1 visa and then that's how I went back. Now there was a um, was a technical issue. There was a requirement, uh, something called a two two year homestay requirement, and um, again, um, there was a lo the logic behind it was that you have to come back to your country and contribute. Uh, but I I applied for a waiver of that. I it took me a few years to get it, but I I got that waiver from the United States government. Uh, but I knew that deep down that I will eventually go back to Uzbekistan and I will give back. It's just for me personally, I thought the timing would be better to do it later once I get more experience and I actually can add more value coming back home rather than right away when I was just a student. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, let me ask you a question that you mentioned that you, you've been in an interviewing panel. Mm -hmm. uh, can you name a few mistakes that people usually do? Uh, during interviews and that ruined their chances of getting a job of being hired? Okay, uh, so I think there are two things that come to my mind. One is being nervous and I have to tell you that um, nobody is uh, is insured from that. I myself mm -hmm. get nervous right before talking with you, Danya. Now I was getting a little bit nervous. Um, and right before you go to interview or do anything like that, you get nervous and it's normal and everyone does that. But you have to mentally prepare yourself that um, mm -hmm. you cannot afford to, to do that because if you do that, you, you lose your chance and you usually get only one chance at making a first impression. And when it's an interview, that's it. You'll probably never meet, meet this person again. You have to make the best of it. So you have to prepare yourself that no matter how hard it is, you have to be strong and not get nervous. Because if you get nervous, that's right. it. You have failure, right? You fail the interview, you're not going to get anywhere. So um, I think you just have to prepare yourself. Also, maybe accept um, from the beginning, what is the worst that thing that can happen to you? Uh, one book that I read that made a huge difference in my life was Dale Carnegie's book. Uh, maybe you've heard about it. It's quite a popular book. And uh, he mentions there that um, you get, you're anxious, you get nervous, but when you accept the worst that can happen to you, mm -hmm. you, you say, okay, well, that's it. This is the worst. What else can happen? So then you feel much, much stronger. So I think people need to prepare themselves better mentally not to get nervous mm -hmm. because otherwise they lose a chance. And the second mistake that I've seen was that I had a few students who were very smart, who were very, their resumes and CVs were really outstanding and great. But when they come to me and then I ask them, what is it that you like about the University of Pennsylvania or why are you applying to University of Pennsylvania? Some guy one time told me, oh, I'm applying to about 20 schools and the University of Pennsylvania is just one of them on the list. And I don't know, it's one of the universities. That's it. Sorry, whatever else he says, it doesn't matter because for me, I'm, I take it, okay, if you're not even like, if you don't even want to be there, then why bother wasting your time and my time? Um, uh, that's why I said that it's very important that you have to show 
the interviewer, you know why you want to be there. You know where you're going. Is it the university or the job? What is it that you want um, about this company? What it is that you like or dislike? Not necessarily like or dislike, but just showing that knowledge and preparation makes all the difference. Because if I had two students, can two student candidates, and one was saying that this is their dream university, and they want to be there, and this is the ABC three things or five things that they're gonna do to make the university a better community, but they're not necessarily maybe as smart. I would probably pick them over someone who is super intelligent, who has all the credentials, but doesn't really care because I want someone who cares to be there. And I think it, it goes the same for everyone. When I hire someone uh, uh, to work for me, I want them to work for me. I want them to want to work for me and mm -hmm. to have the, uh, drive to show the willingness willingness mm -hmm. yeah because i can teach them whatever that, that is i need them to do but i will never be able to instill that that drive and wish to be there and this is the most important thing because if someone wants to be at your company or your university they'll do their best and the rest comes so those are uh, my my two cents thank so you. yes thank you stamila um thank you for the presentation for the wonderful presentation. Uh, thank you for answering our questions. And um, I think it's time to wrap up as I don't see any questions in our comments box so far. So. Well, you have my uh, contact information. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to uh, to connect to you. Oh, okay. Yeah. As to me, I'm always happy to, to share my experience. And if there's anything I can help with, I'll be more than happy. And thank you for having uh, given this thank opportunity you. to be here and to share my experience. Yes, thank you, Tamila, for being our speaker today. And I also want to thank our viewers for watching us. And hope to see you all next Wednesday on uh, USG Alumni Talks here on the American Spaces in Uzbekistan Facebook page. Stay safe and healthy. Thank you, Danya. Bye -bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.